Jim, you are here not only to be inducted into our St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame, but you're going to get two awards. Not only that one, but also the August A. Bush Jr. Award for Excellence in Business. Uh, which one of those do you think that uh, you're more proud of? Well, they're both great, but the, the business stuff kind of got you to the baseball, so uh, <laughs> you got to stay focused on the bottom line. Well, in your high school yearbook, you know, everybody's high school yearbook, it's who's most likely to succeed. Did you say most likely to own a world championship sports team? Uh, I, mine might have said he probably um, uh, is finished by now, but I, I, was little, I was a little out of control out of high school, but uh, got it under control. Well, let's start in high school with your athleticism. Uh, <clears throat> you were a standout pitcher here, and you went to uh, Central Missouri State, and you still own the record for most strikeouts in a game, 18 at Central Missouri State. Um, that, that's true. The, the guys I play with, some of them might be here tonight. But, um, they said, Jim, it was a, um, it, it, it was a, um, it was a night game and we had no lights, so that's what they had to do. <laughs> so it was easy to knock out 18. But no, that was in a World Series. And, and it was in a College World Series in the first 11 in a row. So that was a lot of fun. Wow. Wow. That's a, interesting. Um, so obviously, uh, you were named uh, to the uh, MVP of the MAIA uh, <clears throat> team and named a two-time All-America pitcher. Uh, have you uh, been a major success in sports and, and business favorite? What is your favorite memory of your high school days, first of all? Well, we, it started young. I mean, I've known Mark Blue since I was in kindergarten and a lot of these guys in high school and grade school, so we always played a lot of sports, as he mentioned, and uh, played on a lot of different teams together, so we had a lot of fun. And a lot of us were together, you know, through grade school at Grace Chapel and then in, in Luther North, and, and we had some good teams. And I think it just taught you a lot about working hard and, and uh, you know, making good friends. And what's great about it, even some of my college buddies that I played with, and, you know, you remain friends with those people for a long time. The other common thing that I've heard the whole night, which is great, um, and they often don't get enough credit as the coaches and the teachers. Um, I, had a, I had a guy in college that stayed on me pretty good, and um, he was a great guy and, and kept me in school and you know, really uh, allowed me to finish school and move on from there. So uh, a salute to you know, all the teachers and coaches which are here tonight. Uh, they do an outstanding job. When I was, <laughs> when I was, practicing, when I was practicing my speech, and my wife was listening, her favorite part of the speech, since she was a teacher, was the part that I said about Lutheran North teachers and how they started your career uh, in education and how that brought you through and through a lot of these people, brought them through uh, many of their endeavors. When you were playing uh, baseball at Central Missouri and winning all those awards, was there any doubt that you didn't want to go into baseball after that? Are into business. Well, you you know you've got some guys, uh, Hall of Fame football players here. Everybody dreams about getting into pro sports, and you know I thought you know I might have a chance, but tweaked my shoulder at the end. And uh, you know, bottom line, if you really know how hard it is to make it, now owning a team with you know 200 players of the best of the best in your in your system, and to make it to the big leagues and stay in the big leagues, 10 per, 10 percent of the guys that are drafted and sign a contract of all the people that sign and play, which is about 200 per team, so maybe 6,000 or something, only play one inning in the big leagues. 3% play three years or more, so it's really hard to, to make it big. If you can play in, in, in high school and, and be competitive, and you can play in college and be co competitive, in business I always would hire people that went through that process because I knew one thing. Um, they, they were determined to win, uh, they didn't give up, and they worked hard. And that's what sports is all about, and I think it transfers to business well. Well, you were uh, in the big leagues in business, and that led to your purchasing the Houston Astros. <laughs> how, did, how did that come about? Well, that's not easy. I tried that about five years. It wasn't, it wasn't easy to get done. I, I chased it around, but one of the uh, big company I'd owned, I tried it. It was public, and I tried to take it private and a big buyout firm came after it and um, before I knew it, 
they had bid it up to about two billion dollars in value and um, they bought it and I lost control of it and it, it was, I was mad about it. I was trying to sell the company. I was really upset and wanted to own it long term. But with that I, I, I got punched out and didn't have a job for about five minutes and bought another electricity <laughs> company and did a couple other things. But then I had the capital to really start looking at baseball and I chased, chased the Cubs that was in that bid. I actually um, had a chance to buy pretty good chunk of the Cardinals, but I could never get control. So yeah. I, I just kept chasing. I've been on the Rangers and took two shots at the Astros and finally got it done with right. some controversy. Right. Okay. So if Jim had all, uh, bought the Cubs, how many people would still be here cheering? <laughs> <laughs> They're a very high revenue team. <laughs> oh, um, how proud are you uh, of owning a team that has gone from one of the worst probably when you bought them to the, the world champions. Well, when I was, was going through the process to try to buy the teams, I got to look at, you know, probably five different teams. San Diego was in there. So I could see exactly how people were doing things. And, you know, the Cubs were in bad shape. And Cardinals were kind of one of the best systems in baseball when you look at their consistency and the way they did things, uh, the way they built their farm system. So, we, when we bought the team, it was terrible. We were losing 100 games. People, you know, were, we weren't drawing anybody. The revenues were way down. I, I owned season tickets from my company. I'd walk down the hall and people would run from me, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we, w we went through, you know, finally got control of the team, and we knew right off the bat we needed to, you know, rebuild the minor league system because you couldn't go full free agents or you'd go broke. And so we were able to hire a guy from St. Louis, Jeff Lunau, that was about three or four down in the system. And Peter Uberoff gave me his name and said, you'll never find this guy because he's not a general manager or even close. Um, but he's the smartest guy I know, and he was friends with his father-in-law. And so the day I got the team, uh, Peter Uberoff called me. He used to be the commissioner and said, here's the guy's number. I called him. Um, he flew down to Houston the next morning and he had a 21-page report on how to fix the Astros. He had been tipped off on the interview, but he was ready to go. And uh, he pretty much executed the whole plan. I just bought into it. I knew enough about baseball to be dangerous, but he really built the farm system. And as the team got better, you know, the attendance got better, and we were able to, to build the team out. And good manager and a lot of chemistry. So that's how it worked. Well, as a former sports writer, uh, and when Jeff left, I thought, uh-oh, you know, because we had a great uh, minor league system here. He built it up, and and I was sorry to see him go from that. No, he's he's a bright guy. I mean, we you know our back office is as bright as they get, and and we use a lot of uh, technology in the system. And you know, I would say they're probably the best in baseball. When uh, but about about two years into it, we were still losing a couple hundred games, and I hired Nolan Ryan. He'd gotten fired from Texas, and we hired his son to work on the business side. And, about two years into this, Nolan walks in my office, he goes, Jim, this ain't working real good. You need to get rid of that guy. And I said, Nolan, I'm not going to get rid of him. You need to go over there and tell him what he needs to do and prove. So I had some pretty heavy duty heat on me to, 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 to cut and run through the middle of the process, but we stuck with it and, and got there. Well, look at the results, right. Um, from all levels, the high school, college, and now the pros, and forgetting the, the championship, what is your highlight? Well, I mean, you guys were kind enough to put that picture in there about three times. Holding that trophy was pretty special. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're kind of numb as you go through it, and you, you got some you get champions here. You know, it's, it just goes by fast, and you're in the moment, and, the, and the, you know, you're playing the Boston, and you're playing El, you know, the Dod or Yankees, and then you're playing the Dodgers. So it was a very, a very eventful month, and it was a lot of fun. I got to have some of these guys down, and I locked them all in a suite, and I said, whoever comes out at the end of the game, fine, I'm not going to check on you. But uh, <laughs> we had some fun with it. But, you know, winning, winning that was uh, incredible. And the town had, had really been beat up, and it was uh, a great story for the city to kind of grab that team. And, you know, the team had uh, Houston Strong on the patches, and, you know, we had a big storm down there and a lot, lot, of, lot of damage, and uh, it really rallied the town, and then the parade and all that great stuff was just uh, really incredible. And the people, you know, really get behind you. Well, and you've always uh, been able to give back uh, to the community. Um, you have something called the Astros Community Leaders Program. You want to explain that a little bit? 
Well, in town, you know, a lot of kids don't have the money to play baseball because you got to buy a glove and a bat. By the time you round all that up and get in the league, it's you know, it's it's a considerable amount of money. So, a lot of the city parks weren't being used. So we went to some you know big companies and asked them to donate money to renovate city parks. We've renovated uh, 22 city parks, and what's great about it is we maintain the park, so they stay as a kind of a signature in that neighborhood of something really neat and clean and in the communities of Raleigh. We've got about 3,300 kids playing now. We bring them to the ballpark for free. Uh, Cisco gives them snacks. Um, so they get a baseball experience. We need to build the fans and um, it's really worked well. We've got a lot of big companies in behind it. We'll continue to push that forward and, and build more out and get more kids and, and, and girls playing baseball and softball. So it's it's been fun to see it work. I, I tried it and we got one company to go in and now we've got 12 and all those signs you see in left field are, we call them the community leaders. Those guys are donating, uh, big companies donating to the community. Mm -hmm. Does that have anything to do with baseball in the inner city? The yeah, yeah, it's, it's, it's basically an inner city type of type of uh, arrangement, but we, we basically go out and, and manage and, and we all, the players go out and sign autographs. We really engage the community with it. When you own a, when you own a, a major league baseball team, you know, the town really owns it. You're just, you're just managing it. And, uh, you know, the, the, to give something back to the community, I think they really uh, give something back to you. Very good. Well, the Astros have been a very, very big success since you've owned them, which is very nice, which uh, leads us to the August A. Bush Award for Excellence uh, in, the, uh, in business for uh, St. Louis and for down in Houston. And um, just wondered, what is more fulfilling right now? Your success in business or your success with the Astros? Well, they kind of go hand in hand, but to get that award, I, I knew I was around a little bit uh, when Anheuser-Busch was big in town here. Um, and actually, my stepfather was a brewer there and uh, parked cars at the stadium down there. So he was a heck of a guy. And, and, you know, they had some great teams back then and they ran a great business. So that's a great honor. Um, with that, it gives me the opportunity to, to steward the team and we'll do a good job down there. And um, you know, uh, we're, 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 we're very focused on giving back to the community and uh, building a team. You know, we really fashioned it after the Cardinals, though, being consistent year in and year out. Very good. Well, Jim, you've won now the uh, August A. Bush Junior Award and are now a member of the St. Louis Sports Hall of Fame.